everyone. In the previous class, we discussed about the RMR system for the classification of rock mass and uh, today we will extend that discussion and uh, we will learn about uh, the other classification system of rock mass which is uh, the Q system and also we will learn about the geological strength index that is GSI. So, to start with uh, let us first uh, understand uh, about this rock mass quality Q system. Uh, this was given by Barton and his team in 1974 at Norwegian Geotechnical uh, Institute which was developed on the basis of several case studies and the objective was to characterize the rock mass and uh, uh, to determine the preliminary empirical design of support systems uh, for uh, the tunnels and caverns. Uh, so, the index is defined and denoted as Q. This index is derived based on the six parameters. The first parameter is rock quality designation that is RQD uh, which assumes a value between 0 to 100. The second parameter is joint set number that is denoted by JN and it takes the value between 1 to 20. The third parameter is joint roughness number for critically oriented joint sets. So, you see that in a rock mass if you have more than one joint set which will be there uh, in the field. So, in that case first our task is going to be to identify that which joint set is critically oriented. Then we will use the property of that joint in classification of that rock mass. So, this joint roughness is represented by JR and it takes the value between 1 to 4. Then the fourth one is joint alteration number again for critically oriented joint set. This is represented by JA and it can take the value between 1 to 20. Then the fifth one is joint water reduction factor represented as JW and it can take the value between 0 0.1 to 1. And the final one is the stress reduction factor and this is used to consider the in situ stresses and denoted as SRF strength reduction factor and its value varies between 1 to 20. So, these are the 6 parameters which are to be needed for each geological structural unit at the site to find out this index Q based upon which we are going to classify the rock mass. Now, this index Q is defined as the 3 quotients first one is RQD by JN, second one is JR upon JA and the third one is JW upon SRF. Uh, the numerical values of Q, uh, it ranges on a logarithmic scale from 0 0.001 to 1000 plus. So, this basically covers the whole spectrum of rock mass from heavily jointed weak rock mass to uh, sound unjointed rock. So, when you have the larger values of Q that represent better quality of the rock mass. So, the larger values of Q if you take a look here at this expression the three parameters which are there in the denominator that is JN, JA and SRF. If their values are low, the values of Q is going to be high. So, numerators RQD, JR and JW assigned values are such that that their higher values they reflect better quality rock mass and 
in the denominator you have j n j n s r f. So, as I mentioned that these are assigned in such a manner that their lower values reflect the better quality rock mass. So, if you have the better quality of the rock mass q value is going to be higher and in case if the rock mass quality is poor that would be given as or uh, the q value for that is going to be quite small. Coming to the RQD, so when uh, RQD is less than 10 percent, uh, the minimum value of uh, 10 uh, should be used uh, to evaluate the value of Q. Now, if the rock cores are unavailable, then RQD can be estimated from uh, JV, uh, which is the uh, sum of the frequency of all joint sets uh, per meter in a pit of 1 meter cube size. Uh, this we have discussed when we were discussing about the methods for determination of RQD. So, this uh, was uh, the part of the indirect methods for the determination of RQD. So, based upon the value of RQD you have uh, the various conditions which are defined. So, very poor will have RQD as 0 to 25 and excellent will have the RQD between 90 to 100. So, as I mentioned just in the previous slide only that these values are assigned in such a manner that higher values of the parameters which are there in the numerator they give the indication of the better quality of the uh, rock mass. So, you see here larger the value of RQD and better is the description for the rock mass. Coming to the next parameters that is the joint set number. So, in case if you have the massive rock where you have no or very few joints then in that case your JN is going to be uh, varying between 0.5 to uh, one in case if you have one joint set then j n would be assigned a rating of 2. In case if you have one joint set plus some random joints then it is 3. In case if you have two joint sets it is 4. Take a note here that roughly the rating for j n is the square of the number of joint sets roughly. Say exam for example, here you have 3 joint sets. So, roughly it is uh, uh, square. So, 3 square is 9. Okay. So, in case if you have 4 or more joint sets random or maybe heavily jointed for example, sugar cube. So, there you have uh, approximately 4 square which is 16, but the rating is given as 15. So, more or less uh, uh, when uh, the square of the number of uh, joints sets that are there in the rock mass, the rating for J n is going to be the square of uh, those many number of joint sets. Coming to the joint roughness uh, number, so here I will not read out each and every uh, row of this particular table. This will be available to you and when you know the characteristic of the roughness of a particular joint from there you just pick the respective row to assign the rating to JR here. For example, let us say that you have smooth and undulating joints. So, what is the rating that you will assign that is going to be 2, JR will be equal to 2 in this case. So, likewise you have various uh, categories here. So, you can refer to this table and pick the appropriate value of JR. In case of the joint alteration number, you have uh, the condition of the joint in terms of let us say the first category is uh, rock wall contact that is in this case. Uh, uh, there is no mineral filling, only the coating is there. Uh, so, in that case further 
various categories are defined in terms of these alphabets you can take a look A, B, C, D and E. Uh, so, say for example, it is the unaltered joint walls and there is there are only surface staining. So, J A is going to be 1 in this case. So, likewise whatever is the category for the case that you are handling appropriately you pick the rating or the value of J A. In case if you have the rock wall contact before uh, 10 centimeter shear, so this is another category. So, here also you have various classes that is F, G, H and I based upon the description that is uh, given here. So, accordingly pick the value of J A. You have the third one that is when you do not have any rock wall contact when it is sheared that means that the joints are open and there is a thick mineral filling in them. So, accordingly you have the various classes varying from K to R and appropriately you pick the value of J A from these rows. So, you must have noticed that there is also some idea about the uh, friction angle for the uh, joint that you can obtain on the basis of the condition of the uh, alteration of the joint. So, that is also given in this particular table. So, this is how we assign the value to the joint alteration number that is J R. Coming to the next parameter which is the joint water reduction factor JW. So, the description of the conditions are given here in this column and approximate water pressure is mentioned in the next column and accordingly the values of JW are given in this uh, last column. So, for example, let us say that uh, you have uh, the condition with large inflow or high pressure in competent rock with unfilled joint. So, what will be the value of JW that you will use to calculate uh, the index Q that is going to be 0 0.5. Uh, coming to the stress reduction factor. Now, this is uh, the most difficult uh, factor and we have to be extremely careful when we use the rating for SRF. Uh, basically, it is the total stress parameter and it ranges from 1 to 400 with 1 as the most favorable rock with unfilled joints and 400 be the most unfavorable situation such as rock burst. Now, this SRF is measure of three quantities. The first one is the loosening pressure during an excavation through shear zones and clay bearing rock masses. The second one is the rock stress which is uh, defined as QC upon sigma 1 in a competent rock mass. Uh, where your QC is uh, the UCS of the rock material and of course, sigma 1 is the major principal stress which is before excavation. Then the third condition which SRF considers is the squeezing or swelling pressures in incompetent rock masses. So, you see it is covering wide range of various parameters related to stresses. Now, uh, take a look at these tables. So, the first category deals with uh, this particular part that is weakness zone intersecting excavation which may cause uh, loosening of the rock mass when the tunnel is excavated. So, based upon whatever is the condition that is mentioned in this column, you pick the appropriate value of SRF from the last column and it varies from say 10 and uh, somewhere it, it there is no trend that it is either increasing or reducing. Uh, see it goes to 5 and then 2.5 again 7.5 and then for the last condition that is when you have loose open joints or heavily jointed uh, rock mass then in that case you have to go for uh, the rating as 5. 
In case if you have the competent rock then the rock stress problems uh, they occur. So, based upon the value of QC upon sigma 1 you will have the value of SRF here. Okay. So, in case if you have let us say the low stress which is uh, near surface and open joint. So, in that case you have to assign the value of SRF as 2.5. Coming to the next condition that is I mentioned that SRF uh, takes care of uh, the squeezing and the swelling rocks also. So, in case of the squeezing rocks if you have mild squeezing rock pressure or high squeezing rock pressure accordingly SRF will be assigned like this. Okay. Now, what are these uh, uh, swelling pressures, how to determine these? We will learn this in uh, due course of time. So, uh, for the swelling rock, uh, it is whether it is mild swelling rock pressure or heavy swelling rock pressure. Based upon that, you assign the rating to SRF as uh, either 5 to 10 or 10 to 15. And then there are some notes which are given. I will not be reading these out, but then when you use these table, you should be extra careful that how are you assigning the value to this parameter SRF. Be careful that you do not count for any of these parameters twice, which may happen in case of the stress reduction factor. For example, if you are taking care of uh, these stress related issues while analyzing then you do not really need to consider SRF uh, here in the Q system and that results into uh, say some modified uh, Q system. So, we will come to that later. Uh, so, uh, coming back to this Q system uh, this is recommended for uh, tunnels and caverns with an arched roof. So, based upon the rating of these 6 parameters, you can use the expression which was given earlier and find out uh, the index Q. Based upon this value, you can decide that what is a classification for the particular rock mass. Now, it may not be that easy for you to pick a pinpointed one value to the various assigned parameters or maybe you can always get a range uh, for the um, values of various parameters. So, that would also result in the range of Q value. So, this Q may vary from Q minimum to Q maximum. So, which one should we use in the design calculation? So, what we do is we take the average Q as Q to be equal to square root of Q minimum into Q maximum. So, rather than taking Q minimum or Q maximum, we take the value of Q average in this particular manner uh, to be used in various design calculations uh, as and when needed. Now, this uh, uh, RMR and uh, the Q values uh, they are approximately related by some of the empirical correlations uh, which were uh, developed based on various case histories. So, some of these are given here like as per Binyavasky in 1976 this RMR uh, can approximately be written as 9 ln Q plus 44. This is a very important expression and all of you must remember this that how if you know the RMR how you can find out Q and if you know Q how you can find out RMR. Uh, this Barton uh, in 1995 again proposed uh, another empirical correlation which says that RMR is approximately equal to 15 ln Q plus 50. So, this RMR and Q systems they had uh, their share of advantages and disadvantages. So, uh, let us discuss these and uh, to overcome some of these uh, disadvantages uh, we came across another 
classification system that is geological strength index. So, this RMR and Q systems they are most popular rock mass classification systems. These make use of certain parameters which reflect the intact rock properties as well as the joint characteristic. So, basically these two systems were mainly developed for the tunneling work. So, you see that the ratings of various parameters they were assigned from the case studies or the experience for from these studies based on tunnels, but then these are used for other purposes also. That is one of the major disadvantage of use of RMR and Q system for other projects such as uh, uh, say the foundation design or the slope related issues. Uh, the main difference is uh, uh, in the weighting of relative factors and say for example, UCS is not a parameter for Q system. However, it has some influence through the SRF. So, basically directly we do not use uh, the unconfined compressive strength in Q system, but when we use uh, this strength uh, stress reduction factor. So, there indirectly this influence of UCS comes. The fact is that that when we relate this RMR to Hook and Brown parameters, uh, what are these parameters that you will learn uh, probably in uh, the subsequent uh, classes. So, basically when you relate this RMR to Hook and Brown parameters, it is really not reliable for poor quality rock masses which has low value of RMR. And to do away with some of these disadvantages, GSI was introduced. GSI is a number that is ranging from about 10 for extremely poor quality rock mass to 100 for extremely strong unjointed rock mass. Let us take a look that what all are the major parameters which gives us the idea about the GSI. So, two major parameters are there. First one is the surface condition of the discontinuity and the second one is the interlocking among the rock blocks. As far as surface condition is concerned, it can vary from very good for fresh unweathered surfaces to very poor for highly weathered or slick and sided surfaces with clay infill. The second part that is interlocking blocks. Uh, it is the massive at the upper end of scale to crushed or laminated at the lower end. So, when, when we say that it is interlocking blocks, so the scale that we use, uh, I will show you in the subsequent slides. There, if you have the upper side, it represents the massive blocks and to the lower side it has crushed or laminated uh, rock mass. Uh, so, uh, based upon this six main qualitative rock classes they are defined intact or massive, blocky, very blocky, blocky or folded, crushed and laminated or sheared. Furthermore, Discontinuities were classified into five surface conditions which were quite similar to the joint conditions that were defined in uh, the RMR system. So, basically here you have six types of uh, the qualitative rock classes and five types of surface conditions. So, basically uh, this forms a 6 by 5 matrix. So, based upon the two parameters in this 6 by 5 matrix you pick a block first according to the actual and undisturbed rock mass classification and discontinuity surface condition and based upon this you can get the corresponding range of 
GSI. When you have the squeezing ground condition or the condition of rock burst, in that case there is a drastic degradation in GSI or RMR or Q values uh, when you go for the excavation. So, therefore, there is a need for evaluation of GSI of rock mass in undisturbed condition. Take a look here on this particular figure. So, 6 qualitative rock structure that is intact or massive, blocky, very blocky, blocky or disturbed or semi, disintegrated here it is laminated or sheared. 5 surface quality very good, good, fair, poor and very poor. So, basically this makes as 6 rows and 5 columns. So, it is 6 by 5 matrix as I was mentioning you earlier. So, when we refer to this particular chart, we should use this judiciously for crushed, disintegrated and laminated or sheared rocks. Uh, hard or thick laminated rocks in the last row here uh, may not be applicable because uh, they may have higher strength classification. So, you see that let us say we take uh, maybe the good surface quality say okay, and uh, we have the blocky structure. So, you see that it is this one good and blocky. So, basically we are going to pick this block. Now, you see various lines are there. So, here it is uh, corresponding to 10, this is 20, 30 and so on it goes up to 90. So, these values are the values of GSI. So, when I pick this block, how will I say that what is the GSI for this rock mass? So, you see that it is here, this line is uh, say 55. Okay. So, it is basically varying from 60 to 75. So, we can say that the GSI in this case is 55 to 75. So, it you will never get a particular value or one value in case uh, if you want to get the GSI value. So, it will always be a range based upon the surface quality and the structure of the rock mass. Now, this GSI is uh, one of the parameters which is used in assessing the strength and deformability of the rock mass using Hook and Brown failure criterion which is uh, quite widely used in case of uh, the intact rocks as well as for rock masses. So, these the parameters of the Hook and Brown failure criterion we will learn that in subsequent classes. So, these parameters include M, S and A. So, this GSI is related to uh, Hook and Brown uh, criteria empirically. Uh, so, the relationship between these parameters for rock mass and the intact rock is uh, given uh, by this expression that is uh, M M which is uh, for the rock mass M i is related to the intact rock exponential of G S i minus 100 upon 28 and this is uh, applicable when you have uh, G S i to be greater than uh, 25. Now, how to determine the values of uh, M i? Because uh, to obtain the value of M m which is there for the rock mass, I need to have uh, M i and also G s i. So, G s i I can obtain using the chart that I showed you 
how to get this mi so the typical values uh, for the various types of intact rocks they are given here for example if it is a limestone you have a 5.4 value as uh, the value of mi say in case if you have a norite so it is uh, 23.2 in case of granite it is even larger 27.9 so if you have uh, in general the uh, type of uh, the rock is known to you then uh, maybe uh, you can get the idea about the m for the intact rock from this table now for the good quality rock mass that is when you have uh, gsi greater than 25 uh, the hook and brown parameter uh, a uh, can be determined as 0 0.5 and the other parameter s is defined as uh, the exponential of gsi minus 100 upon 9 in case if there is uh, the poor quality rock mass which is uh, indicated by gsi uh, having a value less than 25 in that case uh, a is defined as uh, 0.65 minus gsi by 200 and s is going to be equal to 0 the other parameters which is m for that i already gave you the expression that it is related to uh, the m for the intact rock and also the gsi so that is how you can calculate m m now when uh, you use the q value to derive uh, gsi it is assumed that the excavation will be dry then we define another parameter that is q prime where the third quotient is not present okay so you have only the two quotients that is first one is rqd by jn and the second one is jr upon ja and hence gsi can be determined uh, using this expression that is 9 ln q prime plus 44 now once i know uh, gsi how can we classify the rock mass so in case if you have the gsi value less than 20 the rock mass quality is very poor for 21 to 40 this is classified as a poor quality rock mass from 41 to 55 it is fair 56 to 75 it is good quality of the rock mass and from 76 to 95 this is for the very good rock mass quality so this is uh, what uh, is all about the geological strength index so in today's class we discussed about uh, the two classification systems for rock mass one is the q system another is the uh, gsi uh, so in the next class uh, now we will take up the failure criterion uh, for the intact rocks as well as uh, for the uh, rock mass. Thank you very much.